John, it looks as though you're going to send a, a strong hand to Arlington for their million race day. Just to explain to us a little the million race day in the context of, a, of American racing, it's quite unusual and a good opportunity for Europeans. Yes, I mean, it is the oldest million dollar race now. I mean, the Santa Anita Handicap was the big, big race. You know, when you had the Breeders' Cup came along. But prior to the Breeders' Cup, it was the biggest race. John Henry winning the first edition in, you know, in the rain and beating Wild Shorthead in soft ground. And then I remember running against him a year later and being second to him was Royal Heroine. So it's, 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 it's been a good race. Arlington Park is owned and redeveloped after the fire by Dick Duchessois. And along with Bill Thayer, they put their heart and souls in that. And Dick has been the savior of racing in, in, in Illinois at Arlington Park. And it is a fabulous grandstand, beautiful facility. And they have this extraordinary good days racing of proper turf racing with the Arlington Million backed up by the other races, Secretariats and Beverly Dees. Everyone who's been to Arlington Park always says it, it really resonates of the place. It's very much the Chicagoans place. It's got a good feel about it. Yes, well, Chicago is a wonderful town. I mean, whether you want to hang around the blues clubs and the nightclubs or go to the Art Institute in the day, in the morning and racing, it's a, it's a great town, Chicago. And, uh, and, you know, Arlington, the way he rebuilt the whole place after the fire has been testament to his dedication. Of course, the Beverly Dees way named after his late wife. So a lot of it's down to Mr. Ducius was. And Debussy is not and will never be the best horse you ever trained, but he'll probably hold quite a special place in your heart for winning the Yes, Arlington I've million. been second in about four times and third in it and everything else. Um, yeah, he was. He, you know, he, he, he got a nice run through the rail and the, and the favourite committed wide and early, so we came and caught him late and caught him very comfortably by half a length. William said, everyone said he timed his run well, but actually the truth was he said he couldn't get through before that. <laughs> but it didn't matter, did it? Because it was the first time the American public had got to, to look at the jockey as well. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it, you're either a, a great hero or a great villain over there. When, you, when not, you're trying to sneak up the inside, you're either, yeah, you're exactly, you either look a genius or, or a fool. So going there this year, um, either with questioning or Colombian, at this stage, which do you favour? Um, well, questioning was that slightly muddling summer mile the other day, and, uh, and I think as Carlton House found, it didn't really suit us the way the race was run. I think we probably, one of us should have gone on and taken the race by the throat, but we didn't. Uh, he's in great form. He would be slightly the one I favour. He's won his group race this year. You know, a mile a quarter round two bends will suit him well. Colombian, again, has won his group race years. This year he ran well in the Prince of Wales on ground. Uh, would entirely suit him, but uh, he's a proper horse for the race. So we'll make up our minds close to the time. We won't send both, we'll just send one of them. Would questioning have a bit more tactical speed for an American turf race? He probably would, and he'd be a horse who'd be able to hand more variation of ground. Colombian tends to like, like you know, by, by that family, he likes to get his toe in. And just reading up what the, the American journalists were saying, it seems to be their feeling that there will be cut in the ground on the Arlington turf course. I don't know. I mean, I've been there when it's been very soft. Uh, you get heavy thunderstorms that time of year. However, I've been there when it was rattling. Um, and it just depends. They have had a, quite a drought through that part of the world. The whole Corn Belt there is in trouble. So, but you never know. Suddenly come uh, race day, the heavens may open. And when you get a storm, there is of biblical proportions. You mentioned the Beverly D. That, of course, is the big race for, for fillies on, on the night, uh, named after Dick Duchesois' wife. Uh, you run a filly called Joviality, who has got some fantastic form this season, particularly that Windsor Forest win. What did you make of her Falmouth run? Well, she, she ran great at Epsom and then uh, ran a fine race in the Windsor Forest. And I'm afraid the ground was just too sticky for her in the Falmouth. It was it's freak weather through July, and she likes cut, but not like that. And she couldn't really handle it. And uh, William recognised the fact with about two and a half, three to run, just left her alone. She's in great form since, and I think she'll go to Chicago and run a, run a really big race. It's, the trip is right up her street, one mile and one and a half furlongs. And she seems to be a filly who, once she gets into a rhythm, just sort of winds it up off that rhythm rather than one with a sparkling turn of foot. Is that a No, she's a le what we call a lengthener, really. Mm. And if she has tactical speed, hold a position, and if you're well positioned off the bend there, then you, you can change legs and go for the wire. You know, it's not a long run in. Are these races easier to win than they used to be? Uh, I think there's no doubt that in the 80s when I was uh, training in America, there was an enormous depth in the hand top, what we call the top rank of older horses, the mile and a quarter horses, Charlie Whittingham with all these really good bunker hunt horses, all these good mile and a half horses. And then you had old John Henry who, who set a high standard himself. And they, they were a really tough bunch. And again on the dirt, you go back to the era, you know, the Ferdinands and Ali Shebas and all of that. There were some really 
great Sunday silence, some really fantastic horses. And they were, it was a tough division and there were tight, tight races. It's got a little one-dimensional now. There's not the depth in those ranks. That's slightly the tendency in America to breed all for speed. Mm -hmm. So when you start, you're going a mile and a quarter, they regard that as a long distance race now. Uh, and you go a mile and a half, that's nearly regarded as a marathon. In fact, you remember the Breeders' Cup called the mile and a half race, the marathon. Yes. So there's slightly that psychological shift. And the horses that go around, as they say, two turns there, are, class horses are becoming thinner on the ground, which is why some of those big races are such small fields. I think that's a pity. I'd like to see the breeding in America go less short-termism and go back to finding some nice middle distance horses. Because without them, their whole classic program gets weak as well. Because as we know, the Kentucky Derby is a mile and a quarter and the Belmont's a mile and a half. When you were training in America, was turf racing really the, the poor relation or did it have a, just an interesting different place? No, it wasn't the poor relation because, you know, Wayne Lucas was reigning a lot as the top trainer at that time. But he was mostly on the dirt. But you had guys like Charlie Whitting and myself, Ron McNally on both. But we would be winning a lot of dirt races and we had some group, lot of group horses on dirt. We had some very strong turf horses. And there were a lot of the smart European horses would come on there as well as the homegrown ones. And it was a very strong division. And I think it's fair to say that it's a more susceptible, easier for us to go for now. If we turn up with a nice group two horse, we'll tend to knock off a group one there without having to make any, not having to have improve a pound. But remember about American racing, you've got to handle that style of racing, the turns, the changing the legs, the, the position, the breather, coming the straight. And the French have done well there because a burst of speed over the last furlong and a half wins you a lot of races in America if you're well positioned coming into the three-eighths pole. Coming into the bend, you get a nice position, you get on the near four, and then you switch to the other, and you can kick that furlong and a half. And French horses have often had a good, good record in the turf races. Dirt racing's different because in dirt racing, so often the first quarter of a mile, two furlongs, is run faster than the last quarter. And you'll often watch that their stride is shortening as they come to the line. And a horse may look like it's quickening, it's not. It's just holding some momentum where the others are coming back to it. It's a di totally different style of racing. As regards the new race on, on Arlington Million Day, the, the American 